hey, I want to go over sort of this programming interview question that Clement had put to somebody who was a competition coder and um, I think they work at Facebook. But anyway, it was pretty cool to watch. I mean, he did this clever algorithm. It's sort of like a coding interview thing. And he did this algorithm that used this fancy lookup deal and everything. But one thing I noticed that I see time after time and is one of my biggest pet peeves with the coding interview style of coding. And a lot of people in general seem to have this complaint too, is that it takes an approach that isn't really real world acceptable in a lot of cases. A lot of people try and just flip the carriage before the horse and go for the most optimal solution right out the gate. And that's cool in some sense, but in a regular real, real world programming sense, that's actually kind of horrible to a certain degree. I mean, if you can do that, that's cool, but a lot of people will do that and they won't focus on like a clean architecture, clean readable code and all that. And I believe that the KISS principle, the keep it stupid simple principle is the right approach for code. So, you know, I would say like 99% of the time we're not going to come up with the most optimal solution first. We might come up with a very optimal solution, but it's probably not going to be the most optimal solution, right? So we're probably going to have to revise that. And if we don't have a good architecture going, it's going to be difficult. We're going to have to sit down every single time and like reread the code and spend half day to a day or something, maybe even on a function, especially if you're not the one who wrote it or it's been so many months since you've written it. And that's just, it makes programming not really that fun in my opinion. I'm sure some people like to dig through and like figure stuff out, but then it's like, what do you do? Do you go in and add a thousand comments to the code? Do you waste a piece of paper, you know, of scribbling down all these notes and maybe even on a piece of paper where you already have some other notes, if you're like me and you'll just end up with stacks and stacks of paper and you're like, well, there's a few important things on those pieces of paper, so I can't throw them out. And it's just, it gets nasty. So anyway, the thing with code, I think is to take that use that kiss principle that's the most important principle and use that first and I I would even go out on a limb and say do that even in a coding interview because it's going to help you and the interviewer both understand the logic that you're deploying to create this solution instead of kind of I don't know I just I always feel like when I watch the coding interview style stuff I can't follow along. It's just too much on the platter for my mind. And I've noticed that with a lot of interviewers too, is that, I mean, they're fairly good at it and everything and they can get the gist of it, but in their mind, they're sort of like rewriting the code into like blocks of comments, I think in their mind of just explaining what's doing and not worrying about necessarily tit for tat of what's happening. So all that being said, Taking, I'm going to start typing here in just a second, but I'm not going to exactly deploy. I thought about like trying to, uh, you know, follow, go along and be like, well, you know, ideally in a coding interview, you should do this and da 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 that. I'm just going to try and do those things to the best of my natural ability. I am not the most efficient coder by far. I've failed the Google interview, if that says enough right there. And, but I have taken the remote Google Doc interview, like what Clement was demonstrating, um, that like what Google will do. So I have been through that process and I am familiar with it. And uh, anyway, so you're, you're basically given a question. I felt like this question shouldn't have taken as long to answer as it did. And I'm not trying to bag on anybody. You know, I understand there's a lot of variables at play and especially the pressure of doing something live in an interview format or whatever. It doesn't matter how good you might be off to the side. There's, you know, even me just recording this screencast right now, that automatically knocks down my, my wit by like 50% because I'm thinking about coding and I'm thinking about like, well, I got to keep talking for this. So that sort of has overlap with like maybe a coding interview, a tech coding interview, because that's the same thing you're trying to do there is you need to practice being vocal and explaining what your thought process is and all that. And the last thing I'll say about this, uh, this meta talk here is as far as what I'm going to do 
is not only am I doing this readable version first, but that leaves room for improvement. And it sort of sets up a template for that improvement that's very readable. And I think that's key because especially if you just have a bunch of garbage just slung across several pages, then it's like, it's hard to even improve on that. You know, the first thing you want to do is probably decompose that into functions and stuff like that. And a lot of people will decompose stuff into classes even. And I just feel like a lot of times that's overkill, you know, functions maybe, but what I prefer to do when I'm coding is start writing a monolith and then a function's technically more detail, you know, um, just the whole thing of writing out the, the intro line of like defining the function and denning everything over and then adding the return. And then if you really want to get cool, you'll use dependency injection where you're basically kind of redundantly passing in variables to it and stuff. But if you start out and that's fine, that, you know, that's the little trade off. That's like a lot of times once anything gets, you know, at all complex, you want to do that. Once it takes more than a few lines of code, you want to consider passing it off to a function, especially if those few lines of code you are feel more comfortable tacking a comment onto. And most especially if you feel like tacking multiple comments onto a block of code. So anyway, I'll get started. So what the deal is, is that it's going to call a function and it's, it's going to take a phone number and it's going to take a word list and it's going to take those phone number digits and it's going to find the, uh, whether or not if you convert, convert the phone number or excuse me, I'm trying to think of a good way to say this. So taking the word list, you want to see if any of those words are in the phone number. And the example he gave was 1-800-Flowers. You know, if you type 1-800 and then you look at the numeric keypad, you'll see that digits uh, 2 through 9 have letters associated with them, like that old school texting format. And if you just push the letter, the number that corresponds to each letter of flowers, you'll effectively dial whatever 1-800-Flowers translates to, right? So what we want to do is take a list of words and find out if those can translate into the phone number given effectively. So I'll go ahead and do that. We'll say words in numbers will be, or words in number will be the function. And we're gonna pass it a phone number, same one they used in the example, 366-2277. I feel like that was a, they used some good uh, example fodder for it. And then we're going to give it a list. I'll go ahead and close that off. I'm going to just use JavaScript. He was, you know, in all fairness, he was using Java in the example, which JavaScript's arguably uh, fairly much more cleaner code to write. It's a dynamic programming language and especially more pure object oriented programming language, I feel like, than even Java, which so, that might, some people might find that statement surprising, but it's true. If you go and look at it, even Python, um, Java was just one of the first really big and accessible object oriented programming languages besides maybe C++. Um, but they both are leaning back towards C, which was a more structural programming language. It wasn't an or object oriented programming language. Um, dynamic languages, they shouldn't be static, like static languages, like the const keyword in my opinion is evil in JavaScript, but I don't want to go off on too much of, you know, object purity rant here, but I, I'll just say when I took my Google interview, I chose Java over Python. And then even when I was coding, I was doing the whole thing like, Oh, I better make this, you know, this a final variable because I want to protect it and da da da. And I was totally in that mindset at that time. And then it was shortly after that, that I started realizing, Hey, you know what? Like, uh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I should have used Python. Like, and that's why people prototype with Python a lot is because you can just not worry about that stuff. You know, it doesn't really matter if you're protecting that variable or not. A lot of times, um, that's sort of like an optimization. If you think about it, like you're optimizing the robustness of your code in that situation. But when you start out, you just want everything to be really simple, really readable. So uh, Python's very especially suited towards that and JavaScript also. So I'm going to go ahead and use JavaScript. So anyway, if I could type while I talk, that would be nice. So it's foo bar. I'm creating the word list and then I'm just using basically like a JavaScript 
style array, which is a lot like a list in Python. Um, Baz. This is, like I said, this is the same list and phone number they used. Foobar. Emo. Cap. Car. Oops. Car. Cap. Or it was Cap then Car. I'll keep the order the same. It shouldn't really matter. The same as they had it. And Cat. So there should be eight words. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I did cap twice. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight words looking good. Okay, so that's going to call this function that I'm about to create. Function. Or I should call it words plural. Words in number. I like everything to be really readable. So that the code just practically, you know, as much as possible kind of reads almost like a comment or like a recipe if you were just going to describe it in plain English to people. So I'm going to pass a phone number in and that word list. Okay. So that's looking good. So now. So this is basically just the template. I haven't really started coding yet. What I'm doing is just setting it up for this is, you know, the bare minimum of what would have to go down, right? There's nothing really customized right here yet. So I'm calling the function. That's one thing I want to make sure and do, at least in this example, because I am actually going to run it, you know, run it through the interpreter or compiler or whatever you want to call it, which in most Google Docs scenarios, you're not going to do that in a coding interview. But anyway, um, what we need to effectively do here, like the simple, the keep it simple way of doing things, would be to convert these words to their numeric sequences. So if you were to push F on the phone, what number would be resulting of that? And then create a set that effectively decodes that for us. So that will that set, which in Python you'd call it a dictionary in JavaScript, you call it an object, um, you know, and whatever for your appropriate language you might be using, you're just effectively creating like key value pairs, a list of key value pairs, so to speak. And that would also be like a hash map or a hash table. And that's in coding interviews, a lot of people will recommend that's one of the first things you should go to because it's easy, it's quick, um, and it's usually pretty efficient. It's usually leaning more efficient, even if it's not the most efficient choice. So all that being said, that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to name it. It's going to be keyed by words, and that's going to, or actually it's going to be keyed by letters. Keyed by letters, and it's going to give us the digits or numbers. We'll say digits, or yeah, digits doesn't matter whatever your personal preference is and you can always go back and change it later so a variable called letters digits and it's going to be a set and it's going to have a letter and then it's going to have a digit and then so on so copy and paste that and if you're doing a coding interview you wouldn't necessarily have to fill out this whole thing maybe you might just kind of note it out like write a few letters and their corresponding numbers and then the dot 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 ellipsis kind of thing and then if the person actually wants you to do it then you can go ahead and do it but for this situation I'm being thorough this is going to be a completely working function so a b c d e f g and I'm going to try and stick with the format on the phone here and so it's like key twos a b c key threes d e f and so on with seven having four letters and nine having four letters. So if I do this, I'll break logically instead of like breaking in the middle of a number. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and then come over here and break down. J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, which should be seven, T, U, V, 
w x y z okay and get rid of that last comma and then i'll come back up here and populate it this will be a b c and so on just take me a second to do this And then, of course, the numbers. So the first three numbers will be under the two key because one doesn't have anything. So two. And then the next three will be under three. And then four, of course. And there's obviously ways to generate this. And that's something if you were doing this on a coding interview, you probably want to mention that. I'm just, for illustrative purposes, I feel like just being able to see it is more illustrative. And that's also an optimization that could happen, is to go back and do that. And you notice I did four for the sevens, and then nine also has four. The bottom two outer keys, like that. to save it off all right so far we have the the key value map to convert the um, each letter to its equivalent number on the keypad so now we want to start working with that we want to go ahead and do that next step just like we would on a plain sheet of paper if we were going to jot down exactly the the basic simple steps that somebody would go through so for each word in the word list I'm going to say of because in JavaScript if these are lists like array list type of things so of is a more efficient way to usually a more efficient way to go through that so of word list but it's basically the same as like word in word list in other languages and stuff but it avoids uh, digging through the prototype chain so if that's just a that's actually a slight optimization here I really could use in, but I'm not. that's about the most optimization I'm going to do on my first draft here. So for word, for each word of word list, we want to dig it out of this, this letters. Um, well, for each word, we need to go into each character of each word. So for each character, um, I would say like, you know, character, spell it out like all obvious like that in Word. But the problem here that I seem to have when I tried this out earlier, I wasn't going to rehearse it. I tried to just record it without rehearsing it, more realistic code interview style, but I just completely suck like that. So I went ahead and like kicked this around a little bit before it would be like, okay, maybe have a little bit better rehearsed to just sort of convey the info and then other people can practice it as they see fit too. But anyway, this is what I would be most, not necessarily most tempted to do. All the most tempted things were the things that I just nixed out of the whole presentation. But obviously there's a lot of other temptations we can have of just like wanting to do these optimizations right up front and everything. Keep it simple, keep it readable. Um, but in JavaScript, I noticed that it, it uh, at least on the foo bar was the only one in my implementation that I noticed it did it on, but it will pick the letters, the characters out of the word out of order like half out of order so that didn't work so in that case sometimes you run into implementation details in a programming language and you just got to drop back to the low level option is the best thing to do and the one good thing is the low level option is probably going to run faster than a lot of the high level options anyway so that would be just a, a traditional for loop so variable i equals zero and while that index is below the word length which of course will be one above the actual array indexing, so to speak. Um, we're going to increment it. So 
save that off and uh so yeah so so now we're saying for each i'm just going back up to line eight right here and saying for each word of word list and then we're going to effectively i'll go ahead and comment this so it's a little more legible for each character in word or we could say for each element actually because it, it will index a character, but we don't want to think of the I as being the character. That's just the index value. So that kind of is like the happy middle term, I feel like, for readability. For each element in Word, we want to pull its table. We want to get its numeric value. So for that, and we're going to, what are we going to do when we get its numeric value? We're going to drop that into a new set that's a key value thing of the words and their equivalent numeric values. Instead of just doing uh, another list, you know, we could do that and everything, but I just, I feel like for readability and everything and to keep the code really concise without having to like run multiple arrays and stuff like that, we'll just keep it simple. So doing that for each word we're going to have a uh, well first of all we're going to want to create a new set and it's going to be keyed by words and then it's going to have the sequence of numbers so words and their digits if you find that too confusing similar to letters digits you can you know follow whatever practice you want but this seems to work all right for me so words, digits, and this is going to be, of course, like a set, a key value type of set. And then down here, and notice how I'm going back and doing the little data structures as they're needed, you know, based on the recipe. So instead of like trying to predict what my recipe is going to be and front load the, the uh, data structures in front of that, I'm just kind of following this natural flow of like, well, what am I going to do? You know, like if you think about if you're going to go to the store or something, you might not, it might be harder to think like, I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to start driving and where am I going to end up? You know, like that's one way to do the approach, you know, but I'm thinking of like, what are like a goal based approach more, if that makes sense. I don't think that's the best explanation, but anyway, I think you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. So we're going to inside of the word digits, we're going to have to create those keys. So, um, words, digits, and then it's going to be keyed by word. And I don't have to do a bare thing in JavaScript right here because this is already, the set's already created and it's dynamic. So I can just, as soon as I start assigning values, if I just generate a new word, you know, from this for list effectively, then that will automatically just create that variable inside of that set. So words, digits, uh, key by word and we're going to do an empty string in there and that string is going to become that digit sequence just saved as a string instead of a number because we want to parse it more in a list fashion and a number is more just like a like a value than it is a um i don't know i can't think of the right way to describe it right now but it's just that you know that numeric value so parsing each digit would require some boilerplate kind of code that we don't need to mess with. So anyway, that's the reasoning behind doing that string. And in the future, if for some reason that wasn't more efficient, which I don't think it is, but who knows, maybe somebody has some wild algorithm that it is, that could be pushed behind some pretty function name and dealt with accordingly like that. Just cut and paste right there. So we're going to say for each of those, for each character, we're going to go into that words digits that new set we're creating and that word and we're going to append to it the uh, the current result which would be the letters digits and we'll go into that find the current letter which would be the index of the word that we happen to be on sorry I know that's a little bit to think about right there. That's about as low level as I even, I don't even want to say like to go as, as I would go because 
like I said, I would do the for in kind of thing, but then we lose maybe depending on implementations of JavaScript and stuff, but we're not really guaranteed that with this particular language to get that ordering that we expect. So I had to go ahead and kick it down a notch right here. So it's not quite as readable, but I'm trying to keep it there. So for each element in the word, we're going to go into words digit and get the word, which is our new thing, right? So words digit, we effectively create that empty string right here on 10 with based on the word. And then we're going to dig into words digit based on that word, which the first time through is just going to be this one empty string. And then we're going to append to that empty string effectively. Uh, we're going to dig into the letters digit based on the, uh, the index in the word, which will be at first, it will be this zero index in the word, which will give us this first letter. And we're going to take that out. So with foo, that would be the F. So it's going to come over here and it's going to go, oh, F three. And that's going to replace this whole thing with the three and append that into this empty string. So we're going to have a string of three the first time and then so on and so forth each time through the loop. Then the next time, O, it will come down here. Um, we'll still be in this little cycle. We won't come back out here and reset the string yet. We'll still be in this cycle and it will go, you know, it will move the index up one to one. It will come through here. It will be effectively on the same word because we haven't moved that up yet. It will append to that, um, or I should say that word digit string too. So we'll effectively still have that string with the F in it. It will append onto that um, word one, which word element one, which will be this O because it's zero based, right? And then that, that O will go in and index into letters digits and we'll come all the way over here and we'll grab that six and that will get appended onto there and it'll keep doing that. And then once this first word at least will be three characters big, so that will do zero through two and then it will drop out because I will no longer be less than the word length and it will drop out and it will cycle back up. So far we don't have anything else. It will cycle right back up to this for loop. It will grab this next word bar and then it will go and create an empty string um, under the key of bar and it will go through and do that exact same sequence again right there. If everything's working like it should, of course. And one trick like in Java, if you're coding this out, you could really get away with omitting these and that would save you, that would keep the code compact on the screen in my opinion. Um, this is JavaScript and you risk getting automatic semicolon insertion. So these are generally considered a, a good practice to, to put these in even if you only have one line right here. And so that's why I'm doing that is to ensure that. Okay, so it's going to do all that for each word and that's going to build up the word digits. And I think that should be it. So if this were a coding interview, we just have to assume maybe that that would be it or ask some questions or the interviewer might say, you know, what about this? Or have you thought about that? You know, there could be more to it. But what I'm going to do is since I'm not in the coding interview, I'm going to verify that that's actually it. I'm going to say for, this is just a little tack on code right here that I'll just delete. I'm just going to run a quick little debug line. Excuse me. So we'll say for each uh, word in, since it's a set, we've got to do the in. Um, I'm not going to do has own property or any of that stuff right now because that is technically an optimization and we can get away with not doing that here. It shouldn't take all day. So for each word in words digits, which is the little data structure we just created, we're testing, we're going to console log and we want to console log first of all the word, the key, oops, word plus I prefer ES3, so I always lean towards ES3 and I like these type of strings and I'm going to go ahead and squish it in here because not only is this just a throwaway debug statement, but also uh, this is a parameter to, to a function. So I should be able to get away with that, even aesthetically speaking for the minute. And then we're going to go into words, digits, and we're going to get that word. So the first thing in for in, it's going to give us the property, the word property, like the key. And then um, we're going to fish out the number 
by feeding that into words back into words digit right here and that's going to effectively give us the key and value which you could just call it key and value but i'm being a little bit more specific about what it is in my editor i'm going to hit f5 to run that at the console and i misspelled something hit f5 again okay there we go foo bar baz foo bar emo cap there should be eight of them one two three four five six seven eight and those numbers look like they're the correct ones so we're on the right track here I can uh, go ahead and get rid of that line and move down to the next little block so we know up to this far we're good we've got that translation map table whatever you want to call it going on in words digits and this could effectively be um, one thing you might want to mention if you were in an interview is that you know this could be all pushed out to a function and then you could just replace this with one line you could replace that with a uh, you know instead of like var words digits equals a set and then this chunk of code right here you could say var words digits equals some function call some really basically whatever you'd want to comment this block as to describe it to yourself that's what you'd probably want to name the function so you replace this with that function name that comment and uh, and then in this case specifically to JavaScript I would just push it down here and do a nested function inside of this function um, that would give us access to like letters digits without having to pass it in as like dependency injection or anything like that and it's just in my opinion it's the cleaner efficient way to do it in JavaScript unless something dictates you know later in the future as you begin to scale that application if you do then you might have to pull that out later and then pass real quick you know refactor and pass the things in as a dependency injection type of thing but anyway that's that's an option to move this into the declarative thing and make this a little bit more of a high level just a few lines of declarativeness and then push this implementation detail out to there and then later in the future if you decide hey I know a better way to populate the words digit list like they did in the the coding interview Clement and the, the gentleman did they could then just re-implement this one little this one little section and it would already be compartmentalized and nobody else except for the people dealing with that specific function would ever even have to deal with it if that makes sense it's very clean okay so anyway now that we have the numbers we have like foo you know the key value pair foo equals 366 bar 277 baz 299 and so on in our words digit list we can take that and search the phone number for those sequences so we'll say for each uh, for each word and it's a set so for each word in words digits we want to what we want to search phone number so we're gonna say if phone number dot search built-in JavaScript function and this search function could be replaced in the future as well we're just using it because it's simple built-in readable quick easy all that kind of stuff but in the future at a drop of a hat you could just literally just override that function or make your own with a slightly different name if you want to make it even more readable so anyway if the phone number search has the word oh not the word right we want the word sequence so we'll do words digits that will give us that digit sequence words digits keyed by the word so it will effectively flip that word into its digits and then search the phone number with it and if it has that then it's going to give us a number value from zero to whatever the index is it's going to give return the index value if it doesn't it's going to return a negative one so we want to look for if it has it it will be above a negative one value so that's how we'll deal with that and so if it has that number then we want to add that to our resulting set we don't have a resulting set our final list so to speak so and I usually you know it's fairly common one of the conventions is to say result you know of a function because that's what we're gonna return it's kind of like starts with RE just like return so a lot of times I'll just 
that's the variable I'll use as the I'm going to return a result of this function, right? So based on that, resulting resulting kind of lends itself to saying, hey, this is the value we're going to return, and then it's um, resulting words because we're going to return a list of words that that are found that work with this phone number. And that's just going to be a plain old list. It's not going to be like key value paired. It's just going to be like the list we passed in minus the words that aren't in there. And of course, you could even, edit, there's so many different possibilities, right? You could edit the existing list and all that, but this is just keeping it simple, you know, small price to pay, a simple, small little list, but of course, the room for optimization, you know, so by keeping this all small and compartmentalized once again like that, you're leaving, you know, instead of jumping and wasting a lot of or burning a lot of brain power on like the most optimal solution right out the gate. And then, you know, if you're able to implement that quickly and efficiently for some reason, you're probably going to have to even step it up a notch from there. So be careful, you know, make that bed how you make that bed because you're going to have to lie in it. So I'm trying to make it all pretty here. So this, the resulting word list, we're going to, uh, in JavaScript, that would be a push. So resulting words dot push. That's how you effectively append to like an array list style thing in JavaScript. Push the, uh, the word itself. We don't need to push the digits. We just needed the digit sequence just to confirm that it would work in the phone number. Now we're going back to just the word itself and pushing it in there. And that's that. Otherwise, don't do anything. And really, I think we're done here. So we can, before we return anything, I'll go ahead and do a console log on that. And just, uh, let's see if we can get away. It's been a while. Resulting words. I don't think it will even give the whole list. Oh yeah, it did. Okay, so foo bar, foo bar, emo cap car. To my knowledge, that's correct. We're supposed to be returning six values, so that looks good. So since we know that looks good, we can return resulting set or resulting words. And then I'm going to come up here and see everything looks good. I'm going to just do a test run, make sure I don't get any errors. Okay, and then I want to verify that, you know, I just like to be thorough in how I test and make sure that everything went through and save this and run it and there it is once again those six words so what you can see here is and basically you know right within that that 24 the old school limit was like 24 by 80 24 by 72 you want to keep everything into a screen full I'm not saying that's like a hard rule right here but I just like to try and lean towards that so you can see in like roughly a screen full we've accomplished this and it's fairly readable you know right here of course you might want to say like whatever maybe populate um, populate what I can't even think now words digit yeah populate table with da 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 or I don't know what populate words Populate words with words with digits. Or no, you know what, even more simple, just think of it like a function. Words to digits or something like that, you know. And then if you came back and did pull this out to a function, you could just literally call it words to digits, you know, or whatever, or get words to digits or whatever or create words to digit set, however you desire that. And the same thing with down here, you could just say, okay, this is um, checking if, you know, this would be words and number, which is, what is it? Yeah. Whatever, you know, whatever you want to name it, that's, I feel like I'd say something stupid or whatever, if, um, what I would name it. But anyway, that's what you could do. And otherwise, if we really want to 
And this one, the reason I put that comment there is just because these old traditional for loops are just so low level, you know, that that, that helps the person just kind of read it. Um, there's always the danger that these comments could get out of sync and everything. So ideally, even this for, you would just stick that behind a function, even if you had to, like, whatever i don't think one for loop like that's the biggest deal in the world but i really you know leaning towards that declarative programming style and then if you really wanted to even squash this down further i'm not really going to do any optimizations above and beyond what i've done here i'm just continuing on the readability path and i'm breaking this at logical steps i'm not breaking it like bringing leaving two fives on one line and bringing them down to the other i'm leaving all the sevens right there you know and that's pretty much good enough for me right there. So, and then I left a blank after the the block right there, just following like some simple code styling rules. But yeah, I'll just run it again. There it is, foo bar, foo bar, emo cap, and that's how simple it could be, how quick and simple. And then from there, you can work with your interviewer and build it up, and then you have something nice and clean, and for the most part, readable. You know. And like I said, refactor out to those functions. And even if you're just building up your own program with functions, this is the way I say to personally most times, build out that little monolithic structure first. You know, I wouldn't even put this in a function in a scripting language. I would just go and just code this against the rail. And then it's like, okay, what's this page of code, this screen full of code doing? Then I push that into a function. And then I'd pull all the blocks out, push them into their sub functions in JavaScript or whatever. I'd probably have those nested first and then I'd create a little declarative list of calling those you know what I mean and that's that anyway thanks for checking it out if you have other ideas which I imagine you would or whatever feel free to uh, you know blast those in the comments including you know whatever if you think I suck or whatever give this video a thumbs down by all means but no matter what you do have a good day